Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. In this video, we are gonna be forging a blank that I sell over at my website, blacksmithpdfs.com. You can find a link to that in the description down below. And then I will also have Jessica at some point add a little card uh, that you can click on. That's a direct link to take you over to our website if you have any interest in purchasing one of these blanks from us. So let's get right into the video. So the kit that we're gonna be forging today is a spatula blank kit. Now this is going to be the uh, classic handle design or your basic skillet or spatula handle design. Now there is a different design over at the website as well. It's a hooktail design and I'll have a tutorial on that uh, at, in a later video. Now all of my tutorials for all the blanks that I sell over at our website will actually be in one big playlist here on the channel and that'll be linked in the description and you can feel free to check that out to see what else we have. Uh, we should have tutorials on all of these at some point in time. So in the kit, you will get your spatula itself, you will get your handle, and then you will get a pair of rivets to assemble the whole thing together. So just like in our ladle video, we're gonna start with the handle first by giving it some texture and dimension and then we'll move on to the spatula itself. So let's go ahead and get this hot now. So first things first, I like to come to the horn of the anvil and I actually like to forge these edges down a little bit. I like to get this to have a little bit more dimension in the handle here. It's going to cup on us, so we're gonna straighten that out a little bit as we forge here. What this also allows us to do is this allows us to stretch that handle out a by a little bit, which makes it very nice. Forge this out nicely here. shape to it, straighten it up, just get it straightened out, and that looks pretty good. I'll take one more pass on that. All right, so there you have it. So we've got that now forged out a little bit better. So that's good to go there. Now we're gonna heat this up and we are gonna put a texture into it. For this particular handle, I'm going to use a ball peen texture. Now you can do whatever type of texture you like with this. It could just be plain, a plain forged texture like you see here. You could scallop the edges as an option. You could do some fullering, some center fullering down the piece as well, um, if, if that's something that you're into. Uh, there's a lot of different options for you to get creative yourself uh, with these handles here. But for this particular video, we're gonna do a ball peen texture. So when you're doing a ball peen texture, it's important to make sure that when you're hammering, that you hammer each spot independently of the others. So you don't want this to be overlapping hammer blows. You want it to put each blow right next side the, the other hammer blow. You don't want to direct it right on top. Of course, it's going to do that at some point, and that's okay. 
But the important thing is that you try not to hit in the same spot again and again and again. You try to work the entire piece all over. That's what kind of sells this look of the ball peen texture. Now obviously we're gonna get some distortion here. Clear that up. So we're gonna straighten that back out. Flat that back down. Make sure it's straight. And then we will do some more texturing. But hopefully you guys can see how that's looking. Just like so. All right. We'll get it hot and we will work down to about three quarters of an inch off the bottom or 20 mil. All right, continuing the texture, right on down. And again, stopping at about that three quarter of an inch mark. In that area there needs a little more texture to it. Okay, we're gonna straighten out any distortion we had. Now, last but not least, I like to give this a little bit of curvature cup this direction. So I'll go to the edge here of the anvil. If you have something like a, how do I wanna say? If you have something like a swedge block, this is very handy to use that about right now as well to add curvature to it but I'll give it a little bit of cup this way, a little bit of crown. I find that that just makes it feel a little nicer in the hand. But again, that's completely up to you yourself uh, to make those type of decisions on a style that you would like. So I'll get this hot again and I'll continue to give it a little bit of crown by using the step in the anvil. Be careful not to take this too far. You can get a little overzealous with that crowning operation there. Uh, so just, just be careful. A little goes a long way in this case. Give this a little bit more shape. Again, we've got a nice texture going on it. It seems to be flowing really nicely. All we're doing is straighten it out a little bit. And there you go. We've got a nice curve to it, got a nice texture going on. And now we're ready to attach it to the spatula. Now, if you notice, there might be a bit of a twist in this. This is really easy to, easily taken care of. You clamp this end in the vise, and then you just give it a little twist to straighten that handle out. If you got any little whopper jaw in this. But now we're ready to go on to the spatula part. Okay, now for the spatula end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this on our anvil. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a small bevel on the very end of the spatula. Now you don't have to forge this bevel in if you don't want to. Uh, you can actually just grind this bevel, it's just fine. Uh, wanna get it out close to the edge for that final thin portion. I find that if you're already here hammering away, it's just easier to go ahead and forge this little bevel in uh, to begin with. It's a little easier to get it nice and have a nice long bevel to it and it look a lot nicer once you get it done. Dress any spread that we had on the piece in width by bouncing it that way. And there you go. We've made a little bit of a bevel to it. That'll make getting our flap jacks off of the skillet a lot easier. 
So there we have it. Now, now that we've got that bevel established, the last thing we have to do is assemble it. Psych, I lied. <laughs> I almost forgot. One of the most important parts. We need to actually bend up this little tab up at the top here. We're gonna line it up with where the two straights are or the end of the arch. And then we're gonna bend this in the direction of our bevel. You may be asking yourself, Roy, what is this for? And like most spatulas, it's so this way you can actually get the spatula down into the pan. And so this way it can lay flat while your handle in relation to it can come up like this. Um, if you don't have this uh, little bevel forged over, like what you see in here, uh, you just get this little straight spatula. It's not really gonna do you a whole lot of good for nothing. So keep that in mind. The main, the main key here is to just keep everything as straight as you can. We're gonna hammer it straight down. Sharpen up that corner. As you can see, I went over 90 just a little bit. That is so I can ensure that I get a straight corner. Now I will heat this back up and we'll go over the anvil and we'll straighten that out just a little bit for our spatula. But yeah, you've got to have that little tab up. If you don't have that, that tab bent up, you're not going to be able to scoop much of anything. It's just going to be a flat blade. All right. So here we are. We're going to go to the anvil here. And now we're going to straighten out this a little bit by hammering on that area that we've previously folded over. And we're going to sharpen that out right here at the sharp edge of the anvil. Nice and clean. And that will hold that up at a nice 45 degree angle. Clean off our scale. If you need to add any hammer blows in here to straighten her out, go ahead and do so now. There we go. And then if you want to take any more out of it, you can go to the top of the anvil then, top of the anvil space, and hammer on that joint to lay it out a little bit more flat. So I'll grab this. Keep in mind, every time you hit here, and if this is still hot, that's gonna wanna bend because it's locked down by your tongs here. So if you hit here, and this is getting cold, and this is a little hot, it'll bend in this area. So you do have to flatten that back out to straighten it out. Lay it on the anvil top. Just make sure everything's good and clean. And it appears to be. Poof, voila. There we go. We have our spatula end done. And now we are officially ready for assembly work. So now I can show you how that's gonna kinda go together. If you don't like the angle, continue to flatten this out if you feel that you must. Um, you know, you can also bend this, the handle slightly, to adjust the handling angle if you do like the spatula where it's at. You can always rivet this together and then just bend, heat this up and bend this down ever so slightly uh, to get it where you want it. But there you go. That's about how that's gonna look. So now on to assembly work. Okay, now that we've got our handle holes drilled here, I drill in an eighth inch in from each edge. So I make sure that once the final hole is drilled, that I'm at least one eighth of an inch in on both edges. So if you come up about a quarter of an inch, and a quarter of an inch or so in and place your center punch mark, that should leave you with close to about an eighth of an inch. You might wanna, you know, just eyeball it to where when the rivet 
is inserted, when the hole is drilled, it's left you at least an eighth of an inch of material around your hole. Um, and then do a little center punch mark and then drill it out. I like doing the handle first. Then I clamp it to the spatula itself. I make sure everything is square and lined up the way I like it. And then I go ahead and drill this first hole. I'll drill this first hole. I will rivet it. Then I will come back and drill another hole. I will drill the other hole and then rivet that one. And then it'll be time for finish work. Okay, so we got our second hole drilled. Now we're gonna take out our second rivet, put it through, dome side first, set it on the anvil, and right down we go. So there you have it. That is done. So the only thing that's left to do now with this piece is to wire wheel it. I'm gonna, I would wire wheel this up. That's why I would suggest. I would also suggest that if there's any sharp edges when you're feeling it in your hands, to go ahead and address those with a bit of sandpaper. Just run it over like you're buffing out a boot, like you're polishing out a boot. Go ahead and rough that off with some sandpaper to take and smooth out any edges that you may feel a little sharp edges or so. Uh, and then the lastly, last but not least, you can leave this raw like this. That's one option. Or you can season it much the same way that you do cast iron. All you're gonna do is rub this down with the oil of your choice. Uh, something preferably that is food safe, clearly. <laughs> you wanna rub this down with a food safe oil and then put it in your oven for about, yeah, for about 50 minutes or so, 45 minutes or so on, if you have a broil setting, put it on high broil. If you don't have a broil setting, uh, just put it in the oven at about 550 degrees or so. And then that will end up creating a nice, even darkened season finish and uh, it'll prevent rusting and any food from sticking to it. But there you have it, nice and easy. Again, you can find this kit, you can find just the spatula itself, and so much more over at blacksmithpdfs.com. Uh, we are making these now. I'm actually cutting these out in-house uh, for you out there to try to help you all in your blacksmithing endeavors and your businesses, and hopefully get a couple of you guys going out there. So be sure to check out the website there. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and as always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.